You're hitting the road for the 4th of July, but some people are hitting back. The latest outbreaks of road rage. We've all been there, we've all felt it, but did it ever go this far? Holy cow. Like right. the lightsabers. Tonight on 2020, it's not what would you do, it's what should you do. Uh, not this. I don't see you touching it now, though. Out of my Tips for when you're trapped behind the wheel. We noticed this lady in my rearview mirror just, just weaving, it's crazy. But that was just the beginning. She just hit our car, she just hit our car. She's pushing us off of the road. Put it in reverse, put it in reverse. She's knocking on our window saying she's a cop. For some, road rage can be the ending. If I would have known that it would have ended the way it ended, I would have never, ever followed him. She had every opportunity change her mind and not chase my brother across two freeways. In just the last 24 hours, a new assault with two deadly weapons, a car and a gun. The man in the red pickup truck pulled out a gun and shot her in the head. They were jostling for position. A promising young life cut short. This is now a murder case. Tonight, Freeway Fury. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Vargas. David is away tonight. Take a look at that. All the traffic and taillights. Typical sight in rush hour in any major American city. But this holiday weekend, it's bound to be worse. Experts say more than 44 million people are expected to be on the roads this Independence Day weekend more than any other time. And with all that traffic, there are bound to be flaring tempers. So how does road rage start? And what should you do if you find yourself caught up in it? Here's Eva Pilgrim. We all have it in us, even if we don't know exactly where it is. You should have a limit, a breaking point, a dark place where civilization ends and animal instinct takes over. And there may be no faster way to get there than right here on the roadways of America at the intersection of velocity and violence. Oh, we have two victims here. You've seen the stories leading your local news. Another case of road rage. And polluting YouTube. What feels like a daily diet of road rage reports. Just last week, this shocking video of an incident on a California freeway <gasps> leading to a multi-car crash. Call 911, Chris. Nearly half of all drivers surveyed have experienced some form of road rage. Here in Denver, the Mile High City, drivers have hit new lows. Local officials reporting deadly traffic crashes have been slowly creeping up for several years. We know you're fed up. So are we. We came to see for ourselves. It didn't take long for us to find it. Rocky Mountain Rage. Ali, that guy, he was like almost in our lane. <laughs> you want reasons? Look around. The city's rush hour turns freeways into ant farms. It's a stop and go sea of brake lights. Yeah, it's not moving up there. What typically should be a 30 minute commute can take nearly an hour and a half, enough to turn any driver into a ticking time bomb. I was surprised at how bad the traffic is in Denver. It's heavy heavy, it's crowded, and it's aggressive. Captain Jeff Goodwin of the Colorado State Patrol is fighting the uphill battle against an army of hot-tempered motorists. Don't touch me! There is that group of individuals that get up helter-skelter every morning. They're never on time. So now they're running late, and they've got to make up that time. So how do they do it? They do it by pushing people out of the way, cutting them off changing from the inside left lane all the way to the exit ramp right as they get there. Goodwin believes he's pinpointed the root of the problem. With more than 100,000 people transplanting to Denver every year, it's as simple as too many metal machines, not enough pavement. I used to think it was something like people cutting you off. But you know, one of the things that people really get angry about, if somebody honks the horn at you, because you've sat too long at a light. I think they literally go from the Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde. Around the country, it's not just gangbangers and street thugs mixing it up. It could be any of us. 
Take a look at these guys in business attire doing the WWE Smackdown. We showed the good Captain Goodwin some examples of bad behavior, and he provided us some potentially life-saving road rules to help you. Rule number one, don't make eye contact. This motorist is out of control. And this victim is doing all the right things. Just stare ahead, don't engage. Right, yeah, the minute you engage, who knows where this goes. Rule number two, never approach the window. All right, wow, okay. This is more than over the top because now you have a gun involved. So you're gonna pull your gun out? What kind of just You never know who's packing heat. Exactly. Is approaching someone's window ever a good idea? Never do it. And most important, rule number three, you don't always have to win. It looks like it's gonna be over. But as we see in this case from Houston, the parties involved just can't help themselves. And here we go. There you go. I mean, now they're at full-blown fist fight. Right, this is what happens. It gets worse. The longer this goes, the worse it's gonna get. It looks like they just need to win the argument. That's what it is. Oh, oh. It was 4.15 when we hit the road with Goodwin and his team. They prowled the interstate looking for bad behavior. We're looking for aggressive drivers. Triggers. Holy so Which often lead to the road rage we see on the news. This is a 75 mile. Well, we're doing 17 and a 75 at rush hour. Uh, I got a lady who was texting if you want to pull her over. Within minutes, Goodwin's team has spotted a common breed, a texter at the wheel. Goodwin says distracted driving, the number one offense that sends drivers into road rage. And how does that end up leading to road rage? Well, when she's texting, she's not paying attention to everybody else out here. Next, we cross paths with a Leadfoot Speedster, the deadliest kind of aggressive driver. I could see him in the rear view mirror weaving in and out. He was trying to find that opening. And that's when people get mad. Right. It was now 5.45, the road rage witching hour. Yeah, we're pulling out. Goodwin says the peak time for trouble. And the cops had busted this aggressive driver for skipping the off-ramp and blazing her own trail altogether. Right now, there's a warrant for your arrest. Her prize? Some new bracelets and a ride in the fast lane to the county clink. She doesn't have a valid driver's license either, so that's been canceled and denied, so she shouldn't be driving anywhere. We'd found ourselves at a notorious hot spot. So this is the, uh, the frontage road where we have a lot of our issues and got a dose of full frontage fury. So people will be frustrated. They'll come off the frontage road, and then they actually will do this. Believe it or not, they will drive here. Holy cow, this is so and steep. And they will find that steep drop down to the interstate, and they will bounce their way back down into Interstate 25, all because they're angry about sitting in traffic. Off-roading on I-25. Yeah. As Friday rush hour traffic mounts once again, we spot this guy who thought he could make up time bypassing all the drivers ahead of him, riding along the road's shoulder. But he's going nowhere fast today. Go over here. Hey, sir, do me a favor and stay in your car while we do this business, okay? You passed about seven or eight cars going alongside them on the right. You went over the white shoulder. That's not a lane for turning. It's not a lane for passing. Like many road rogues, this guy's idea of defensive driving is making excuses for his alleged moving violations. He even called 911 to complain about being pulled over. He stopped me first on the train track with the train coming down the road. And now that he's caught, he's upset. Just is not in agreement at all with what's going on here. So. That's his beef. There goes a the guy. There he goes. Next, check out this blue truck. The driver has jumped the median, passing up other cars, hightailing it the wrong way into oncoming traffic. Captain Goodwin pulls him over, hand on the holster. What was it? I haven't seen anybody drive that aggressively in years. He's doing about 90 miles an hour. He damn near hit several cars back there. I charged him with reckless driving. He just didn't plan on having any law enforcement around to stop him today. 
You don't think it's just a Y chromosome thing. You see a lot of aggressive driving from both sexes. Everybody drives crazy. It's yeah, it's... <laughs> when we come back, we'll prove it to you. Yes! Oh, yes. She just hit our car. Oh, she just hit our car. A wild woman at the wheel. We go around and then she speed up and we're kind of like, all right, can get away from her. And two damsels in distress trying to rescue themselves. Highway Horror Show when Freeway Fury continues. Now, 2020 continues with Freeway Fury. Here's Nick Watt. Two young women out on the open California highway. So you've been friends how long? About a year. We had boyfriends that were friends. And okay. then we kicked them to the curb and then we stayed friends. <laughs> okay. We knew what was good for us. <laughs> Carefree, on their way for a fun weekend in Reno. Cell service is fading, the road is getting quiet and lurking far behind in their rear view. A truck driving fast, aggressive, right towards them. Sounds like the open to a slasher flick, but this tale is as dark and real as a hot coat of tar across I-80. You're about to see it play out in real time. Meet Vanessa and Delaney. Vanessa, a student and waitress. Delaney, a former Miss California contestant, now also a waitress. The duo just looking to let off some service industry steam. Looking forward to us drinking and not serving drinks. We weren't in a bad mood. We were by no means in a hurry. That wasn't us that day. I jumped in Vanessa's car and we headed north to unspool the rest of our tale. We saw her in the rearview mirror cutting between cars. I would say that was trouble, but I didn't think we personally were in trouble. Then Delaney broke a cardinal rule of road rage prevention, flipping the bird. At what point did you flip her the bird? After it had been going on for, I'd say, a good 10 minutes. In life in general, are you like a flipping off type of person? No, I'm normally really calm. Did you want to strangle me? I'm guilty of that too, of flipping off drivers, yeah. but you would never expect it to escalate the way that it did, you know? Actually, experts say that's exactly what you can expect. You never know who you're flipping off and where their head is at. When you add a little finger into that, maybe the one finger salute, that creates crazy in a heartbeat. Whether it was Delaney's salty salute or not, the truck inexplicably began to try and push Vanessa off the road. That's when Delaney starts filming her homemade horror flick. Like, I almost want to stop and pull over at an exit. No, because then she'll get out of the car. Dude, I don't know what to do. She's in the slow lane next to me and just starts pushing me, like coming into my lane and pushing me into the shoulder of the fast lane to the point where I have nowhere else to go and I have to come to a complete stop in the middle of the highway. Delaney calls 911, but reception is bad. Finally, Summer Barton answers their lifeline. Do you remember what you thought when Delaney first called in? Okay, this one's real. Like, this is serious. Just drive, just I keep driving. I, I know, just keep driving as well as you can. You're fine, I promise. Hi, we have a really bad emergency on Highway 9 or Highway 80. We have a vehicle that has been following us, telling us that she's a cop and keeps trying to tell us to pull over, and she's swerving us off the road. She keeps trying to hit us off the road. I'm freaking out. Dude, she's gonna me. Yes. She just hit our car. She just hit our car. She's pushing us off of the road. Yes, she's pushing us off the road. She's coming for us. Put it in reverse. Put it in reverse, Vanessa. Put it in reverse. Suddenly, this woman jumps no, out of the truck and runs to Delaney's window. She's in a Explorer. It's a Ford Explorer. It's a sport truck. It's silver. She's saying that she's a Don't. cop. She's knocking on our window saying she's a cop. Go ahead and go. There's... Go. Summer listens in, reminding Delaney of that crucial rule, avoid eye contact. It's scary when you hear what's going on. The hardest thing was looking straight forward, talking to the 911 operator, saying she's pounding on my window and I don't know what to do. And we both said later, like, what if she had a gun? Turns out the California woman with this Richter scale rage issue was a Deirdre Orozco. That badge from her job at a senior living facility. The closest thing Orozco ever came to being in law enforcement, she was once a bail bond agent. And I'll bet you a new set of rims, you won't guess where she'd just come from. She'd literally just been out of jail for hours before attacking us. Yep, this home movie is actually 
a sequel. Four days earlier, Roscoe had crossed paths with this guy, Dane Larson. Happened in Sacramento at this very intersection. And I'm just sitting there, and that's when I hear it, and she's coming up, blaring her horn. She comes up behind, the horn blaring, and, and just hits you back. She was like trying to push me out of the way. Uh huh. That's it's exactly, like that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Roscoe ended up parked on the lawn of a house a mile or two away. And she was going crazy. Now she's been released on bail and back on the attack, hauling a wide load of anger management issues in that two-ton truck. Dude, she's so confusing. She hit us. Okay. Your main goal is to figure out where they are. It says next right fuel. Summer knows that just down the road from that gas station is this CHP outpost. She tells the women to exit at the gas station and hopes the police can intercept. You're her lifeline. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Responsible. You know, for her safety. Okay, there's an officer right now with us. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Bye-bye. This is where it happened. Today, we've arranged a little surprise. And these are the officers <laughs> who were there. <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> uh, just a little bit. <laughs> no. Can you, you, can you guys hug? Like, thank you, is it for that? Aww. I'm sorry that you had to deal with her. Oh I will That's never it. forget you yelling. That's Get in the car. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're not done yet with the surprises. This lady <laughs> is Summer. Hi, who you were talking to on the phone. Hi, <laughs> thank you. Deirdre Roscoe was arrested there and then. Here she is in court, ready for some more. Demolition Derby. Did she go easily? Well, she, uh... I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I, wouldn't say easily. I wouldn't say easily. She was kind of feisty. Roscoe ultimately pleaded no contest to charges of assault with a deadly weapon, her truck, and making threats to commit a crime resulting in death in both cases. Whatever is the most expeditious way, that's what I want to do. Sentenced to 925 days in county jail and five years probation. Roscoe declined our offer of an interview. Did you make it to Reno? Yeah. We did make it to Reno. Sh shook it up. It wasn't quite the girls weekend you had in mind. Didn't no. start out on the right foot <laughs> so well. To review, aside from flipping the bird, these women did everything right. They avoided eye contact, remained in the car, and called the cops. It worked out well. But there are those who'd rather play policemen themselves. When we come back, wild ride with Colorado's own fur-capped road avenger. Get out of my Law enforcement says day. he's a vigilante. I'm just floored at the fact that you keep doing this. Twenty twenty continues with freeway fury. When it comes to road warriors, it seems cars and motorcycles are natural-born enemies. When push comes to shove, literally, some people take the law into their own hands. In fact, one of the most infamous showdowns took place just a few blocks from here. Here's Eva Pilgrim. Most motorcycle versus car clashes start when, in the biker's mind at least, the bigger vehicle doesn't demonstrate due respect. You see right there, he actually taps a biker who appears to have brake checked him a little bit. This notorious 2013 scene on New York's Henry Hudson Parkway was no exception. You can see it, he stopped, the car's over here. All of these bikes around it, he's trying to get through and he pushes, oh you God. see him. The driver of this SUV fleeing, he says, out of fear, running over a biker, leading to this chaotic chase. I mean, that's the worst case scenario, you act out, you're in fear of your life, you're gonna get the heck out of there, but then they're gonna get you. And so this gang mentality develops amongst all these bikers and, and you clearly see they're gonna get you. He's got his wife and his baby Unbelievable. And earlier this year in San Francisco, highway history repeats itself as these bikers attack this Toyota Camry. A driver was beaten and seriously injured after an altercation on a freeway between a car and some dirt bikers. So look at this now, you take a guy down, it's all on camera. Closer to home in Goodwin's backyard of Colorado, this frightening case of Mustang versus motorcycle. They were both egging each other on and look at this, 
You have this drastic move to make a point, so there's your last word, and it could have killed the guy. Yeah, it's all about respect, I think, and courtesy. We see this all the time where someone's willing to use a vehicle as a deadly weapon to take somebody else out. Now, as if Captain Goodwin doesn't have enough on his hands, he's got to deal with one motorcyclist turned vigilante. You're about to meet Denver's own Dark Knight. His name is Devin Jones. You just cut me off, stupid. His alter ego, the Road Avenger. It's kind of a crazy outfit. <laughs> yeah, I look ridiculous. I mean, just, Do you think you're a superhero? <laughs> no, not, not really. Jones may not cop to it, but these YouTube videos tell another story. The story of a man, his motorcycle, and helmet cam. A vlogger obsessed with publicly shaming anyone he perceives as a roadside wrongdoer. These videos and his 125,000 YouTube subscribers are how he pieces together a paycheck. Here's a man Devin says was guilty of a trifecta of transgressions, grazing behind the wheel, surfing while driving, and running a stop sign. I know you feel really cool, but you should put the salad and your phone down. Most people only go with one. I mean, what's the, what's the logic here? There's no logic. I call him an agitator because he doesn't need to do this. A little self-righteous, you think? I think so, absolutely. Phone down. But as far as Devin's concerned, the cops can be road hazards too. Here, he even dares to pull over an officer who he claims was driving while on his phone. That's road rage. No, I was honking because you're on your phone and I needed you to get off so that we could travel smoother. You stopped me specifically from doing my job. I, I didn't want to talk to you. I just wanted you off your phone. Where does this come from, this motivation to confront perceived roadside dangers from years of experience on even deadlier highways? Whoa! I joined the Army in 2006 when I was 17 as a combat engineer, deployed to Iraq and to Afghanistan doing IED route clearance. That's a pretty dangerous job. Yes, it's pretty much the most dangerous job. And now, 11 years later, do you feel like you're still doing that? I didn't until you pointed that out. Recently, Jones has taken to handing out business cards so people can view themselves later on YouTube. In this instance, he confronts a man who he says wouldn't let him change lanes. Here you go. You'll see yourself on here later. OK. The card is not well received. He feels like it's his duty to let them know they did something wrong in traffic. You're on camera, stupid! You're on camera, stupid! It's like he is the vigilante. He's going to show what a cool guy he is by using his camera to almost entice people into an argument. This woman is even more furious after this dispute about access to this road. She takes a swipe at Devin's camera. There are probably people, when they see the story at home, they're like, he is crazy. Why would he keep going up to these people knowing that the response could be bad? I probably would feel ashamed of myself if I didn't. I can't avoid somebody becoming rageful or enraged. But Devin isn't always the hero on his hero cam. When you walk past this spot, though, do you always look over and go, that's where it happened? Yeah, every time I walk past this, I, I, I do look at the spot and think about it. It is the incident that first brought him viral infamy with more than 7 million views. What were you doing? What was going on? I was on a street next to a park kind of like this one and then out of nowhere a car decided to blast around me and what seems like a really dangerous way to pass somebody in a residential area. So Jones goes on the pursuit, the ultimate no-no according to Captain Goodwin. Don't be the cops. So my first question is, Eva, why? Why was that important? It's not. How you doing? How you doing? I'm pretty good. What's up with you? Yeah, you seem to be in quite the hurry. Yeah. Why are you driving like that? That may sound like an innocent That's question, it. but no one is That's innocent it. here. And now you have somebody who's agitated. There you go. He's a man. He's a big girl. If there's an inner voice calling for restraint, 
Devin ignores it. Do not touch my stuff one more time because I'm going to defend my property. Well, well like a I don't see you touching it now, though. What the my What's up? out of my face. I get a feeling that the, the motorcycle rider felt like this was completely justified. And I'm telling you right now, it's not, people. This isn't justification. This is our job. How do you feel about that video? Um, I think it ended terribly. It's a source of shame for myself. Yeah, you seem to be in quite the hurry. Why not just blow him off and don't confront him? There was obviously some sort of primitive something going on in my mind. Come on. I thought you were a big tough guy. You drive like a big tough girl. You don't even watch it, do you? You drive. It's just like two morons grunting at each other. I'm in my parking space. But after all that macho chest beating, both men refuse to press charges. What have you learned? Have you learned anything? I've I've learned that I'm not as in control of myself as I once thought I was. I need to think about what I'm doing a few more times before I do it. Would you do it again like that? I don't know. A disturbing thought. The righteous ragers are out there tonight. And when we come back, blind rage turns to roadside homicide. If I would have known that it would have ended the way it ended, I would have never, ever followed him. Stay with us. just how fast or how far a road rage incident is going to escalate. Maybe it's just a guy using his phone as a weapon. Maybe it's two dudes having a roadside duel. He's definitely ready to go to battle. He ends up a pipe. But look at this thing break out. Holy cow. Or maybe it goes as far as this crazy scene from Los Angeles last week. At least everyone in those cases lived. But tragically, it doesn't take much for a road rage incident to go from cursing what the is wrong with you? to the coroner's office. How bad can these road rage confrontations get? Well, it's murder. From 2006 to 2015, there was a 500% increase in fatal road rage crashes. And just this week, 18-year-old Bianca Roberson was shot and killed in what authorities say is yet another road rage incident. She was a good girl, on a road student, looking forward to going to college. And a man in the red pickup truck pulled out a gun and shot her in the head, killing her. Tonight, that suspected shooter is still at large. While in Southern California, another road rage killer is behind bars, wrestling with her regret. If I would have known that it would have ended the way it ended, I would have never, ever followed him. Earlier this year, Darla Jackson, a 27-year-old mother with no prior arrest, was sentenced to six years in prison after pleading guilty to the voluntary manslaughter of Navy officer Zach Bube. I'm going to impose, I'm going to commit you to the Department of Corrections, Ms. Jackson, for the middle term of six years. For the, reasons I the encounter between the two escalated when Bube drove up alongside her on his red motorcycle and kicked the side of her car, leaving a dent and a shoe print. She couldn't believe that he had done it, decided to follow him to get the license plate. Once again, the decision to pursue would end badly. Another motorist captured a few seconds of Jackson's high-speed chase on video, and shortly after this clip cut off, disaster struck. What happens is he slows down. The driver doesn't react fast enough to that to gauge how much he's slowing down. So her nose of her car literally rolls up onto the back wheel of the motorcycle. These photos tell the rest of the tale. The two vehicles become one, skidding together for 315 feet before they became dislodged. Bube hit the ground, and Darla Jackson ran him over. She had every opportunity to change her mind and not chase my brother across two freeways. I let my pride get the best of me. I, I shouldn't have, you know, been mean. I shouldn't have, you know, been negligent. The anger 
anguish she now feels apparent in her court appearances and in her interview with us. My daughter doesn't have her mother not for a very long time. It turned out terribly for everyone involved. So I deeply re regret what happened. That angry pursuit landed Darla Jackson in prison. In New Orleans, another heated chase landed former Jets running back Joe McKnight in the morgue. We're going to move on out of that deadly road rage incident in Louisiana where former NFL player Joe McKnight was killed during an argument. According to police, McKnight cut off this man, local IT technician Ronald Gasser. The two then got into a rolling argument which lasted for miles. Still involved in verbal altercations, cutting in front of one another, zipping around vehicles, on and on and on. That's McKnight's silver Audi following Gasser's blue infinity. Minutes later, the cars come to a stop, but the argument continued at full speed. At some point, Mr. McKnight exits his car and goes to Mr. Gasser's car. There continues to be a verbal altercation during that verbal altercation, Mr. Gasser pulls his weapon from between his seat and the console and fires three shots at Joe McKnight, killing him. Did you ever think in a million years he would be the victim of road rage? No. We had to stop being in so much of a rush to get somewhere. Remarkably, police say it was shooter Ron Gasser's second road rage incident at almost that exact same location. Then this week, at this stoplight, he admits to shooting a man. Justice! Gasser has been charged with second degree murder. But in Louisiana, a stand your ground state, he may yet walk free. Looking at justifiable homicide, if you are in your vehicle and someone attempts to enter it, I'm going to presume that for a second, he's justified in shooting him. Gasser has pled not guilty. The trial is scheduled to begin this August, but McKnight's mother has already rendered judgment on the road rage epidemic that claimed her son's life. Are we that angry? Is our nation that angry about things? We got to learn how to channel our energy into something more positive than what we're doing. We're not thinking clearly. Coming up, the Denver cops in a call to action. How you can help them stop the madness when we come back. Twenty twenty continues with Freeway Fury. Once again, Eva Pilgrim. Who are we looking for? Who is this woman? Well, it's one of our uh, repeat and frequent offenders. The cops in Denver have had enough. Now they're fighting back with a call to action, enlisting viewers like you. So this woman's been called in how many times? It has been at least eight times. That's yeah. a lot. That's a lot. Goodwin's referring to a special reporting system promoted along Denver's roadways. I just want to report a uh, reckless driver. A dedicated hotline so drivers can blow the whistle before blowing their stack. Telling them to stay back, don't get close, don't get in the middle of this. Goodwin estimates a staggering 5,000 calls are pouring in every month in the Denver area alone. I just want to report someone who's driving like a maniac. In a novel approach, his team then uses the data to identify those drivers with the most complaints. Then they track them down. Half of these things, these people did to me. Our Denver affiliate KMGH was there. We get multiple calls on a vehicle. When the state patrol approached motor, this man, he'd received seven no, complaints no, no, in saying. eight months. Uh, uh, Mr. Douglas, certain incidences or, or incidents. Uh, I would say a, quote, bad driver would be a totality. His name is Houdini Douglas, and as is often the case, he tries to wiggle his way out of those numerous complaints. Here, as I can tell, none of them have any legal ramifications. Almost every time, guaranteed, it's not their fault, and they start telling us about the complaints they have on the drivers that called them in. We're with Captain Goodwin as he heads out on the hunt. Robert 512 looking for this woman.
Kim Schwartefager. She's doing all the things that make the other drivers around her upset. As we pull into Schwartefager's apartment complex, so we're looking for a blue car. 1041 on CAD. We immediately spot her car. The numerous dents consistent with its owner's MO. So that's our vehicle. So that's what, so now we'll take a cruise down here and we'll kind of wait. But our mini stakeout is brief. Before we know it, Schwartefager is behind the wheel and on the move. Oh, she's going. There's our Boom. car. Boom. We follow, but this time it's the captain who's handcuffed. He can't pull her over without cause. I don't want to harass her. And on this day, Schwartefager appears to be minding her P's and Q's. She's doing like 31, 32 miles an hour. She's clearly aware of us. She's nervous. Suddenly, she hooks a U-turn. All right, so we're going to cut her loose. Three weeks later, we're back, and this guy has ammunition to help their cause. Her driver's license is not valid, so she should not be operating a vehicle at all. That's the van I took a picture of this morning. Okay. Driving on a suspended license is against the law, something Kim Schwartefager appears to ignore. Wow. It takes a lot to get your driver's license taken away, though, doesn't it? Yes, 12 points in a year's time to actually get your driver's license revoked. So it's back to her apartment. Now it's a waiting game. It's like cat and mouse. And when we arrive, the beat up jalopy we followed the first time has been replaced. Here's the new butte. It's a totally different color. Right, I'll probably go back out to 85 and see if I can get her. The next day in the driving snow, we track her new wheels to the restaurant where she works. We have found the car and we're just gonna go verify that license plate. In a word, busted so her car is just to the west of us over that tree and there's a fence okay. and it's parked in the very back corner that you can park the men head inside to confront their quarry but will Schwartefager come out in cuffs how'd it go well she thinks that people were calling her in because she was texting and driving so she openly admitted to that um, she knows there's issues with her license she, three, six, five, zero, three, she gets a break and a stern yeah, warning suspicious. don't drive or she'll be arrested. She wants to figure out a way to get home tonight. If she presses her luck and tries to go home, she might end up having to do jail time over all of this. Still, we want to talk to Schwartefager ourselves, and she surprisingly rolls over faster than a speeding SUV on an off-ramp. Were you surprised that they came to find you? Yes, yes, yes. And my worst um, um, is, is the texting. I was texting him. Never hurt anybody, so I really apologize. So you had a lot of accidents, or? Uh, I've had about five, yes. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you, your license has been suspended, so you can't drive. Correct. And so what does that mean for you? That means that uh, Uber, it's time for Uber. I don't want to lose my new car. I don't want to go to jail, I've never been. And I apologize that I you know, scared anybody. It's not my intention whatsoever. She sounded so sincere, but bad habits die hard. Last month, Schwartefager was cited while driving on a restricted license, this time charged with following too close to another vehicle. Are these normal people losing their lives? Absolutely. Minds? Everybody gets angry. It's just a matter of what flips that switch, and then what do you do with it after it's been flipped? When we come back, the story of a Sunshine State street fight with one final lesson. Stay with us. Freeway Fury continues. Once again, Elizabeth Vargas. This month in South Florida, it happened again. Two men caught on camera in a road rage incident involving a bat. And they go at it, struggling in the middle of traffic over the weapon. Hector Herrera, that batter swinging for the fences, now facing charges of aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. The first thing that came to my, to my head was to grab the bat and go and fight. A typical shake your head road rage story, perhaps, but then a small miracle. Herrera went on television and actually expressed remorse. I would say to him, hey, I'm sorry for the situation. This is no good for nobody. Something to consider the next time you hit the highway. 
You may think you need to win, but perhaps this is a game you'd rather not play. You may think your enemy is in the next lane, you just cut me off, stupid. but perhaps he's in your own head. You may think you thrive on drama, the out of my face. but perhaps what you really need is peace. That's our show for tonight. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Elizabeth Vargas. For David Muir and all of us at ABC News in 2020, have a great night and a safe and happy holiday weekend.